Daniel and Hart. Hey, George. So good to see you. How are on you? On this fine, what day is it? Tuesday? It's a Tuesday and it's 78 degrees. It's wonderful. The dew point has dropped, which means less humidity. I, we needed it. It was, it was muggy. It was mm -hmm. muggy. Um, but then, you know, that's summer in the Midwest. It's okay. It's true. How have you been? I've been great. I've been exploring the wilderness, wilderness and the wild frontier. That's right. Tetons. Grand Tetons in, in Yellowstone Park. Like well, cause you I'm, can. I'm going to stop. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. <clears throat> Right in the old RV, huh? In the RV, 3,500 miles. Oh my gosh. Saw a lot of country through South Dakota, Wyoming, a little bit of Montana, Nebraska. It was great. And COVID free, it, it appears. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Who knows? I feel fine. Everyone feels good. So yeah. that's good. Good, good for vacation. you. Glad to be back, but it was nice. It's nice to it's go hard, off the grid. It's, it's hard to get away, it, um, not only because of work, but also because of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know. So I mean, we had everything in one vehicle: food, I mean, shelter, transportation. How long do you think you could have lived in that RV? I mean, you did for what two weeks? Oh, easily the, all the time. Like, mean like if a catastrophe struck? Yeah, you, like if you needed to just disappear with your family <laughs> sounds like a really terrible scenario <laughs> if you did something that required your disappearance if you had to get away from the authorities <laughs> right right as long as i had a steady supply of license plates oh yeah i guess switch them out mm -hmm. yeah i can't track you that way mm -mm. no yeah i mean it's fairly simple yeah, you've got everything. You got your bathroom, got your shower. Just pull into some campsites. You know, I'm just it's, it's things like this that I'm just always curious about. Mhm. Mm about like how long you could just, live. It was just that was supposed to be a segue. Oh, I yeah. missed it. That's Dang it, right. you didn't take the lead. Dang it. We have yes. been hopping around a lot of topics over the last 60 episodes or whatever we're on now. Mm -hmm. um, both through our interviews with other people in, a, in different companies, through authors, through our conversations and musings, talking through our framework, and, you know, coming back to the postures, disciplines, and structures. And recently somebody shared an article. It's actually a couple of years old. It's a series of articles from the Harvard, Harvard Business Review mm -hmm. that brought back the topic of curiosity. Right. And we haven't actually used that word all that much in all of our conversations. Um, mm -hmm. we, it may have been mentioned in passing, but not actually as kind of a, uh, you know, a pinnacle or a, what's the right word I'm looking for? Like a linchpin in it all. Right. It hasn't been a main topic. No, no, no. It has not been a main topic. And now there's been themes when we go back to the principles mm -hmm. that we talked about around our mindsets or our postures. I think open-mindedness, um, seeking feedback. Mm -hmm. there, there is an assumption that you would have a posture of curiosity mm -hmm. in that, but we haven't actually said it. Right. My name's George, which means I've heard the word curious far too much in my life. So partly it's maybe just the fact that I, I don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're but tired actually, of being compared to a monkey. I, I mean, I, I did love that show growing up because it was basically about me. Um, did your dad ever wear a yellow hat? No, no. That's a, that's a missed father opportunity. I think. <laughs> he missed that one. Like, why did he not have an explorer's hat in bright banana yellow? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually, speaking of my dad, um, and we'll get into this, <clears throat> but I think he he definitely instilled in me or at least fostered this mindset or this muscle of of curiosity from mm -hmm. a pretty pretty young age um 
he was an incredibly or is an incredibly curious person um, to the point where it would just be like this simple, it could be the simplest thing or the most awe inspiring thing. It could Mm -hmm. be, we lived out in the country and it would, and we lived around this river bank. And so we, you know, there's, you just find things and you'd, a log or a tree would fall down and it'd be decaying. And he'd just walk up to it and just be like, man, look at, look at this. And he would tear the tree apart and we'd look to see what bugs were in there. And, or he'd lift up a rock and there'd be a snake and he'd just ascribe, you know, <clears throat> everything was this like wonder of what, what's around the next corner. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it sounds like I'm getting choked are up. You, on are that. you getting <laughs> no. a little verklempt? <laughs> I've just been in many <laughs> meetings today. Um, and the same thing, if, you know, if you look to the, the, the sky and, and I think we've all, uh, humanity has had a, um, a curiosity of what the stars were and he would just, he knew the constellations. He would talk about how light traveled and just like, there was just this like, wow, the world is fascinating. And it just, it just put this, this level of curiosity, which I think played into my entrepreneurial journey. And then, you know, obviously into our product um, experiences and how we unpack product ideas. Um, But I wanted to kind of dive into maybe some of the things that it talks about in the article. But first I wanted to ask you, do you feel like you are a naturally curious person? Hmm. I think there are some people that de- on a spectrum of curiosity, yeah. how, where would you rate yourself? Um, I am curious on topics that I'm interested about at the time. Give me but, an example. Um, like if I'm researching, I don't know if I started. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So I really love just history in general. So if I hear something on a TV show or if I, um, we're watching a movie and a character comes up yeah. or if something's loosely ba- based, like it's like, this is a based on a true story or, um, they're, whether the director or the producer is trying to hold fast to actual yeah, yeah, yeah. accuracy or not. Was Hamilton um, actually a rapper? I mean, no, no. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's something um, my kids I, asked all yeah. the way through watching that. <laughs> Did they really? Yes. Is that how people talked? Um, <laughs> So I'll like just make a mental note of a character or whatever. And I'm curious about that person. So I'll go and read about them or, you know, get a biography on them. Or yeah, yeah. Like um, or if I'm planning on doing something in my house, a project or whatever, and I get real curious about the subject, but then when I'm done with it, I'm just like, me, I'm not curious anymore. I don't need any more information about that. So, so you, you, lo- you might lose interest pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. But as far as like curious about anything I hear, mm-hmm. I would not. Maybe 50% of the stuff I hear, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'll do more research on that. But a lot of the stuff is just like, if it's not going to help me in the moment, I'm probably not. It's probably in one ear out the other. I, I'm a little jealous of you. <clears throat> Why? No, no, I mean that. I think my curiosity is a massive distraction sometimes. Hmm. Um, or it can be. Oh, because, sure. Because I'm, I'm, I am extremely curious. I think I, I would rate myself kind of high on the curious curiosity factor to the point where I could be about a philosophical topic. Mm-hmm. And like I'll just press into it. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten into conversations where people are like, just drop it, George. It does not matter. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I'm like, but aren't you curious? Why is it like that? You know, why do you think the dress is blue? It was obviously gold. It was Yanni. We don't. What, <laughs> what was the other word? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yanni and yeah. Why, why, yeah. why does our brain do that? Um, why, yeah. What's going out on outside my window? I'm curious. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I, I think that can be a little bit of a, it can come across as maybe a little ADD, ADHD. Um, and so I'm always like holding in balance. What is curiosity and what is just distraction? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Laurel, Laurel, Ariani. Uh, Laurel yeah. Ariani. Yeah, that's there it. You go. Yeah, I think, I, but it can go both ways too, because if I'm curious and all my energy is going to thinking about one or two things, the day-to-day yeah. stuff, I can get really distracted because I'm just continually want to go back to researching that one person or researching how am I going to do this? How am I going yeah. to do this DIY project? Or we want You've to- You've built some really cool furniture. I've seen it. Or- or it's just like, hey, we would love to go to this place. Well, we won't be able to go for one or two years. It's like, but I'll still get pulled away. Be like, I'd like to know everything I can about that place. And so I'll be doing my day to day or just 
I don't know. You get in routine tasks and it's just like, oh, I'm just going to go over here and do some research on, you know, the Maldives. You whatever. have sent me some slacks. So you're like, you want to see what I'm actually working on right now? <laughs> so in that sense, that's a huge distraction. So sure. whether I think you're curious about all things or curious, you get so wrapped up almost compulsively into one or two things, mm. it can easily lead to distraction. So I actually want to play off that a little bit. So in, in this article or in the series of articles, um, and I, I did share, share that with you just mm-hmm. for context. Yeah, I've got it. <clears throat> um, in this series of articles, I want to kind of just go through a few points that they talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, just high level. And I would highly recommend you check it out. It's actually from back in 2018. Um, it's three different articles, the kind of overarching topic. What was it called? What was uh, the why actual? curiosity matters. And yeah, then there's yeah. three pieces. They call it a, a package. So to speak. yeah. Yeah. Um, and so there's three articles here. I want to give credit to the people that um, have actually spent the time writing those. Um, Francesca Gino, um, Egon Zander, Andrew Arasco, and Kent. Oh, I'm going to get that wrong. Wrong. Kentaro Aramaki, and then Todd B. Kashdan. So mm-hmm. those are just. I just wanted to mention those names because I want to give them credit because they've done the research. And actually, many of these are based off of some pretty extensive research. So mm-hmm. a lot of what they were looking at was how curiosity gets, um, how it unlocks people inside of an organization, how it allows them actually to move up the chain in leadership, how it allows them to actually do better in their work. Um, But they kind of hit on a couple principles that I just want to go over. And then I want to come back to this idea of almost the value of the distraction, Mm -hmm. um, the value of the curiosity and where that can lead you. So real quickly, the first article talks about the benefits of curiosity. Um, Excuse me. And I've got that tickle. Just right in there. Just right in the throat. <laughs> Eyes aren't watering yet, so we're going to keep going, for, going forward. Just keep going. Um, the benefits of curiosity talk about there's fewer decision-making errors. Um, they unpack that a little bit, but I, I do think that's a really interesting idea that if you're staying curious, you're not making just bold assumptions. Um, subjective, maybe. You're just kind of mm-hmm. moving forward with one thing without considering the other options. Right. Um, more innovative and positive changes in both creative and non-creative jobs. I think a lot of people think of curious people as only being the creative people. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think we know that's not true with both our engineers, our test engineers, our product managers. They're all insanely curious here at Crema. And a lot of our clients are curious. That's why they're exploring innovative software. Um, Reduced group conflict. They go into the fact, and I think this is something that goes back to our framework, which is why I really want to talk about this is that curiosity is about that open-mindedness to, to be curious about what someone else's perspective might be. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm curious, Dan, why you find history interesting. I'm curious why you try to tackle a bear in Yellowstone. You know, <laughs> those, those are all just curiosities that I have. Why, why would you do that? About Daniel Linhart. Um, <laughs> And that leads into more open communication and better team performance. So these are all what they have found is research-driven um, benefits to curiosity. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few barriers to actually thinking curiously, um, they, um, they have the wrong mindset about, about exploration. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they seek efficiency to the detriment of exploration. So that's something, honestly, we were just talking about with our leadership team, that there is a tension that's balanced with the the a very structured process and the benefits that you get of a process and performance and efficiencies. And then the lack of, of adaptation and collaboration and exploration that you have to hold those things in tension because they're both good. Um, they yeah, go, I, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, if efficiency goes so closely with uh, the axiom of if it's not broke, don't fix it, which is yeah. fine. It's perfect. There's Without nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, where you get stuck or where you, yeah, where you might get left behind um, in whatever context you're in is that it can really just make the status quo easy, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It can make it to where it's like, well, it's still working, but you got to ask that question. Could it be better? And you don't have to ask it daily. I mean, obviously that's going to be over, you know, overkill, but yep. if things are changing quickly in a, in a world that, you know, that changes very quickly from a technology standpoint or new ways of thinking about teamwork, new ways of thinking about culture. We, yeah, yeah. Culture, how we do work well together. 
I think having questions around how are the things we're doing now okay? Are they good? Could they be better? Is there a different way of thinking about it? That in and of itself is not efficient, but the gains in maybe a state-of-the-art fix or a new mm -hmm. process looking at something that could the gains realized from that could outweigh the the inefficiency of asking that question and reassessing something yeah and and i i think that it comes back to when we in that kind of a little bit of distractedness or that that um again the balance of curiosity versus distraction when you when you start to exercise the muscle of being curious and keeping that curiosity uh, dial turned up a bit, mm -hmm. um, you start to, you start to see possibilities. Um, and I think that that's something that we have experienced through crema is that we've always been kind of curious, like, I wonder, I think you, 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 you are really brilliant, Dan, at asking questions. And I think that's oh, a, well, that's, well, thank you. Well, <laughs> okay. Calm down. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's like, well, that was unexpected. <laughs> um, no, I think, I've been in multiple circumstances, both on a personal and, and social level and, and, and business or leadership and coaching level where um, you're great at asking a, um, a challenging or a curiosity driving question. Mm. And I think that's one of the, it's a, it's a muscle that you've exercised. You've leaned into the saying, I want to be better at asking questions that allow people to mm -hmm. explore ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's that explorative thought. Even the questions like, I remember one of the first times I was like, dang, only Daniel Linhart. And I really appreciate that <laughs> was when, when Matt, you and I started working together as the kind of executive team at Crema. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was one of our first offsites and we were at that coffee shop and you said, what is, what is something we're doing right now that we should just destroy, that we should just get rid of it? Um, and I remember thinking like, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how to answer that question, but I love the, the heart behind, like, I like that, that what if question, what if, what if there's something that we're doing that is just a waste of time mm -hmm. and how many organizations don't ask questions like that? Mm -hmm. um, that, that is a good, maybe practical tip for those out there, it, which includes me that maybe are curious about a few things, but not everything is to recognize that you're probably what I call or what I've heard called like a plus one person. Like, Oh, interesting. I'm so, um, we're doing a, a bathroom remodel. I have no idea what I like unless someone shows it to me. I'm not a naturally, I know I like this, this, and this, but mm -hmm. if you show me it, I'm like, Oh yes, I do like that. It's the same thing with stimulating curiosity and exploration at your company or whatever team that you lead is if you're not naturally that way, but you know, it's good, ask a question. And that, at least for me, primes the pump quickly and be like, Oh, I see how you answered that. That's yeah. really good. Let's go down that path for a while and let's kind of like spitball back and forth all the things. So I think for me, it's a mechanism to stir thought and yeah. ideas and, Ooh, let's envision this because I have a hard time doing that. But if someone starts it, it's almost like you're pushing a boulder down the hill. It's like mm. someone started it and then it's like, oh, I can get on that. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I, I, think, I think a lot of people are afraid of being curious or mm. they're maybe afraid of curious questions, mm -hmm. um, especially for those people that, well, especially for a Western mindset, which is we like things black and white. Mm -hmm. So when you start ch challenging what we might think is the way things are always have been and uh, the way things ought to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, we start asking, well, why, why is it that way? Why does it have to be that way? What, what, ha what would happen if it wasn't that way? Mm -hmm. um, how might we explore a different way to approach that? Um, right. That's scary because it's, it's unknown. It mm -hmm. actually asks, it, it, it reveals to you your lack of knowledge. Mm. Um, that in the article, and I don't have it right in front of me, the actual particular quote, but it went into this idea that um, maybe it was the last, the last article where it, it, it's a, I think he call, it refers to it as a deprivation sensitivity. Is that what it was? Recognizing a gap in knowledge, yeah. um, the filling of which offers relief. Mm -hmm. So there is, 
there's some element of the fact that people want to be curious because they want to fill that gap in their knowledge. But that assumes that you understand or know that you even have a gap in knowledge, mm -hmm. which means that you're asking questions that are opening up the potential gaps, gap in your knowledge, right. which is very uncomfortable. Um, and for me, it's exciting because I think a lot of people say like, oh, it's the unknown unknowns mm -hmm. that, are, that, that give me anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I, don't get me wrong, I have moments where that still freaks me out a little bit, um, depending on the topic or how important right. that topic is. But yeah. then there's times where I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know that. Like, now I have a purpose. I have something mm -hmm. to go work on to go figure out and go, go learn. Right. Uh, which goes back to our whole learning mindset, right? This is mm -hmm. all about saying, how do we keep learning? How do we keep adapting? How do we keep taking in knowledge and applying it in a right. useful way? Yeah, it's similar to what in the first article, maybe like the third paragraph, it says um, around confirmation bias. This was my favorite part. Yeah. Um, I think this oh, is yeah, really yeah. key is that um, when your curiosity is triggered, um, this is my thought here, you'll ask more questions, which you're less than likely going back to the article to fall prey to confirmation bias, looking for information that supports our beliefs rather than for evidence suggesting we are wrong. Uh, I don't, you know, people don't want to be wrong. And so they get really confident. They get really, um, I'm pretty sure this is right. And so I'm going to go collect evidence, but really what you're doing is you're, want, you're looking for people that are kind of like you that are going to uh -huh. say, oh yeah. So you're really looking for information that just supports your argument rather than asking questions because you know that you have a gap in your knowledge yeah. and you want to get, generate other alternatives. Um, and so I think there's just this fear of like, well, if I'm the leader, I'm the manager, I'm supposed to have all the right answers. So yeah, I'll ask for input, but it's really just to make sure that everyone is aligned with my thinking. And if you're not, I'll convince you otherwise and we'll just keep moving forward. And so yeah. goes society, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But curiosity just gives, it's a full perspective and just spectrum of how people see different things. And it, I don't know when you, what I've learned is that when you get all those perspectives, it's like, wow, this is really interesting. I had, I did not I didn't see anything of what this person just said. Right. But now that they've said that, it makes a lot of sense. And right. it gives me maybe either like, now I think I'm wrong, or it gives me further maybe clarity or insight into how I was thinking. And well, so- I, I, We don't have yeah. to go down that path, but if you talk about the Black Lives Matter is a, is a really good time mm -hmm. to be extremely curious. Like we're, it's forcing us to mm -hmm. see a perspective about topics that we haven't experienced as yep. two white males, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's forced us to ask really hard questions and mm -hmm. look at things from a different way and be curious about it. Mm -hmm. um, and the goodness, yet really hard um, facts that get put in your face um, or even different perspectives within the spectrum of that, that it right. even, even that is not, no pun intended, black and white. It's... Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely, there's still a lot of gray in there exploring, gray. Mm -hmm. um, exploring the, all, that topic and any, in any other topic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he goes on, on the last one, the five dimensional, it's the five dimensional model of curiosity. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that he, he talks about the, uh, deprivation sensitivity. So that's that filling that gap of knowledge and it, it's a relief that you can fill the gap. So the curiosity helps you to, to feel better because you've, um, closed the gap of knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's also joyous exploration, being consumed with wonder about the fascinating futures of the world. I think my dad, that's when I talked about like, mm -hmm. un, you know, lifting up a rock and seeing something there or looking at the stars or, I oh, man, I went on this incredible bike ride this morning and I shared a picture with you earlier where the fog was lifting, the sun mm -hmm. was just riding and it was just like, you just have to stand and on and go, wow, this is incredible. Um, and only if you get up at 4 15 AM, can you see something like that, that time, this time of year? Right. Too early, by the way. Um, <laughs> social, so, social, um, curiosity, um, talking, listening and observing others to learn what they are thinking and doing that goes back to seeing through other people's perspectives and empathy. Mm -hmm. Um, and stress uh, tolerance. That's yeah, really good, that was really good. It's like, you need to kind of stretch people. You need to stretch yourself, stretch your own thinking. And how, if you find yourself getting really stressed or you can't tolerate the amount of stress, mm -hmm. um, it might mean that you need to just not talk as much and ask a lot more questions. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, why? I it's like, have felt that feeling. <laughs> and then I keep like, talking and I don't know why. <laughs> it's like, if, 
I, I feel like you have to be able to, especially, I mean, we could say this about everything, especially because of COVID, especially because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, I right. think it existed before. Maybe it's just more. It highlighted it. It's, it's how, um, how comfortable are you with ambiguity? Yeah. And I think that goes along with that. What's your tolerance? What's your resilience for new options? Because it can be really stressful if you're pretty set on a direction, you ask the question and then like someone's answer just blows up your direction. It's like, I've been working on this for two weeks. (laughs) Well, then I think that goes back to a conversation I had with um, Dave Feldman on one of our previous uh, interviews. Um, Mm -hmm. Hasn't gone out yet, but it will will before this episode. It he talked about the fact that what, what you're then doing is you're questioning someone's identity. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really interesting because like, even it if is. it's like um, a yep. project, so let's say, and he used the example of you've got the iOS developer that they've owned the iOS app that's built. They, they have been responsible for it, but then there's a shift that the, the team as a whole is going to move towards a cohesive feature set across all platforms. So you, sh- mm-hmm. you shift to a platform approach and what you end up having now is, well, no, it's no longer my baby. It's now I'm a part of a tribe that I wasn't a part of a second ago and my identity has shifted. And that's hard. If we think about structures, you know, postures, discipline structures, my structure just changed. My identity just changed a bit. That hurts and that's uncomfortable. And I don't like that. If you're curious, you might be able to say, how can I turn this into, oh, I wonder how that will work. I wonder, I wonder how, how might we, still keep the underpinnings of the, what I've built, but apply this new platform approach, you know, and being able to, to, to ask really creative questions to unlock that. Yeah. Um, it, but, or if someone says something to where you are now have to, yeah. if your logic is no longer sound, then you have to go back to your original premise. Yeah. Was my original premise even right? Yeah. And that may mean square one, but sometimes that's a healthy thing. But yes, about identity, that begs the question of like, where are you, where are you finding your identity? That's it. That we don't, we don't have time to that's go. That's maybe into. for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. to that end though, I think it does come back to it. Oftentimes it's a yes. And mm-hmm. um, as I've been exploring lots of topics outside of work, I've thought about things and learned new things that have shaped and changed my worldview in, mm-hmm. in a really positive way, but it hasn't replaced what my original worldview was. It's, mm. it's added to it. Mm. Um, it's, it's made it more colorful. It's like, mm. Oh, more I used colors. to be able to see yeah. three colors. Now yeah. I can see five mm. and the and, and reality has changed. And I think that's something that curiosity gives you. I'm always, I'm always kind of bummed And this, just as we've been exploring this and talking to more people, the conversation, um, I'm trying to think who we were talking to. It was another interview that we had. Anyways, we were talking about how do we, how organizations don't, won't allow themselves to, to work this way, mm-hmm. right? That this is, this is actually a, a giving up a little bit of control. Giving yeah. people space to explore means that I can't control what they think mm-hmm. and how they do. As a parent, that's really hard. I want to mm-hmm. make little mini-me's instead of allowing them to explore the world and, and find mm-hmm. their own version their own of their, yeah, yeah, their own reality. Um, and I actually was having a conversation with a friend this morning and he was talking about the fact that he wants to do a little brainstorming session where he can allow his team to explore ideas. But this is not their culture. They don't explore ideas. They follow tasks and rules. They follow orders. Yeah. And he said the leadership might be out for today because they're all the leadership was on vacation and it's a smaller company. And he said, um, so we're going to just take two or three hours and, and I don't I want them to explore. And he goes, but we don't even know where to start. We don't know how to do that. We don't, I don't know what questions to ask. And of course, I'm just like, oh boy, I've got mm-hmm. a book for you. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, the reality is, is that we forget that there's a lot of organizations, there's a lot of teams that this isn't, this is not yeah. something they're allowed to do, nor mm-hmm. are they able to do that type of thinking. It's a cultural good for sure. Yeah. It's embedded in a uh, organization's DNA and you can definitely get smaller teams within big companies to kind of have their own team culture, but organizational wide. Yeah. If it's not there, man, talk about again, cause it's not, it's not efficient. It's not, it's not efficient to say, Hey, I want everyone in the organization to spend today exploring new opportunities. I mean, 
Okay. When he said it, he's like, <laughs> the, the, issue, the issue is then I'm the bottleneck because yeah. when people get caught up on their work and leaders haven't told them what to do, they twiddle their thumbs and say, what do you want me to do today? But I haven't had the time to explore what they're supposed to be working on next. And it's right. like, just go do. Well, if you haven't fostered an organization that would allow that curiosity to happen, mm-hmm. to explore what they could go do, then, then they, they literally are trained to not think that way. Yeah, because leaders at that point are just task managers. They That's give it. a task list per day and yeah. Yeah, it's not that they're not, it's a very successful organization. They're, they're doing good work, but the, the potential is being mm-hmm. lost there, I think. Yeah. Uh, last um, last uh, one that he put on here on the, the five-dimensional model was, you, you mentioned stress tolerance, but there's also thrill-seeking. Mm-hmm. So being willing to take physical, social, or financial risk to acquire varied, complex, and intense experiences. I think entrepreneurship is definitely put in that bucket. Yeah. But I think it also can be true on kind of a, um, I think I see members of our team kind of get the excitement off of maybe it's a venture lab Friday or even mm-hmm. something they're going to do for a client where they're going to say, Hey guys, secretly, we're going to go way above and beyond in this. Mm-hmm. It, it might break the rules a little bit, but we're going to blow them away. There is a risk. They could do all that work and it just falls completely flat and the client's not happy. Or it could be that they had this intense experience. Um, I mean, I am definitely driven by experiences. I'd much rather have mm-hmm. experiences over things. Like I don't, I don't want to own a bunch of objects. I'd rather go do something incredible, which COVID, COVID mm-hmm. um, makes that a little harder. Um, but I think this is, again, it's that curiosity. Um, early on in one of the other articles, he, they talked about the most, some of the most curious people are those that have worked at multiple organizations that have traveled the world, that have had more conversations with more diverse groups of people. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, they, they start to learn, oh, my little bubble, my little version of reality isn't the right. only one. So Dan, we touched on the um, stress tolerance mm-hmm. a dimension of curiosity. Uh, the last one, just to touch on it real quick, is the thrill seeking. So that's that being willing to take physical, social, or financial risk to acquire varied, complex, and intense experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, you know me, I love yeah. experiences over owning a bunch of objects. I'd Mm -hmm. like to go travel the world. I like to go out and eat Mm -hmm. at restaurants um, more than I do having, I don't know, a bunch of baseball cards. I don't like, I'm not a collector or of anything. Yeah. I I was trying to think like, what do people have that they. And I, I, I think experience are so important in general, but probably even more pronounced for those that are experiential is like, I think it helps you remember things and feel things because I can remember a lot of things about memories simply because of the experience. Where was I? Yeah. yeah. Um, how was I feeling? I may not remember everything, but the experience helps latch on. Yeah. Or just almost put something that was, um, that was pleasant. Um, it can make it a little bit concrete because I remembered the experience, not necessarily all the details. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that this oftentimes is connected with entrepreneurship because it's about that kind of risk taking. If, mm-hmm. if it's the, if the term is thrill seeking, that thrill seeking is kind of gives you that a sense of curiosity, gets you excited. Mm-hmm. Um, oftentimes entrepreneurs are put in that, but it could be as small as saying, I'm really excited to serve a client in a new and new different way. I, I want to go above and beyond in, in a certain way for this particular client um, or for this particular project. And we mm-hmm. just kind of want to wow people. And so we're curious how we might approach that. Um, there's, Airbnb, I think we've talked about this before, but they had kind of the 11 star, I think it was called the 11 star experience model where it was basically Mm. like a one star experience for an Airbnb when they were defining what would, you know, remember that? So a one Mm -hmm. star experience is like someone gave you a sheet and you can sleep on their wood floor. Right. Right. Right? (laughs) Um, A two star experience is you get to sleep on the couch. A three star experience is you get a room. You know, I, I'm just making right. this up. I, they were they were different variances, but then it gets up to like the 11 star experience is so much above and beyond. It's not even maybe even realistic, mm-hmm. but you have it starts to get you thinking. It starts to get you curious of what could it be like potentially, right. 
And they would describe like, okay, cool. You fly in on a private jet. There is a parade in your honor when you land. We've got activities for a whole week planned for you. And you're going to go skydiving and right. rapids and all these crazy things. You're going to stay in a mansion, you know, like, and it's, that's they provide the, you a list of all the things to do, how to yeah, get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a chauffeur what, and a limousine that'll get you there. Like that's an 11 star experience. Now, is it realistic that someone's going to do that on an Airbnb? Probably not. Right. But as you start to dial back then, then you can go, how might we create something that's closer to that? Um, so I think I love this, this series of articles. Again, it's a little bit dated, just a couple of years, but it's still extremely relevant to what we've been talking about. If, if somebody's kind of wanting to get started in their kind of curiosity, muscle building journey, mm-hmm. where, where might they get started? Mm. I think... All right, I'm going to put myself in those shoes. If I, as an individual, I would just probably think, okay, what am I just interested in in general? And then yeah. just go even deeper. Mm-hmm. Like if you're interested in DIY projects, maybe go deeper or maybe try something that's a lot harder, which yeah. means you're going to have to research it more. Yeah. Um, if at work, I think asking better questions, both in meetings, but also just to get to know people that you just don't know very well. Maybe they're of different background, maybe, because it's pretty obvious sometimes it's like, okay, you and I are, I don't know you well, but it's obvious. We're completely different. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some things noticeable, whether it's like where you're from, um, or it could just be like, you can intuit things. And so lean into that maybe, and just yeah. ask better questions, whether it's around the lunch table or, or in passing in the hallway. Um, as an organization, two things. I love the how might we. Mm-hmm. Rather than... Yeah, I lo- rather than say we should do this, this is an option. It's more how might we encourage dot 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 question mark. How right. might we go? How might we better go about doing fill in the blank question mark? It doesn't prescribe an approach. It it right. opens up the possibilities. Going back to the exploration idea, it mm-hmm. allows people to explore curiously how mm-hmm. they might go at this. Yeah, right. that's good. And I think the last thing is encourage, um, encourage retrospectives. I think retrospectives are a really good thing from a curiosity standpoint because one, you go in there curious to see how do every how does everyone feel that that meeting went right. So where did what went well, what didn't go well? What such a we powerful s- tool. Start doing, stop doing, keep doing. Um, what can we do better? Those questions in general, one are curious because everyone has an opinion as to how something went. Mm-hmm. And it'll open up possibilities like, oh, that's interesting you say that. We should explore changing yep. the way we do that because of what you just said. Um, I think retros, so, and again, at a company, retros would be great. And then just try to build the discipline of how might we. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the only thing I'd add to that is asking why. Mm-hmm. Like just asking yep. why a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why that way? Mm-hmm. Why, why do you think that? Um, and then the second thing is just tell me more, yep. um, asking someone to just explain, go deeper with that. I want to mm-hmm. know more about what you mean there. Um, seeking to understand is, is a curious posture, right? Yep. That's by definition. That's what you're trying to say is I want to understand the world a little bit better and you're in this world. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit more about what you think there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I think that one of the articles talks, I think we mentioned this earlier, but one of the articles talks about the fact that the most curious people are those that have had more experiences. They've mm. gone, they've, they've traveled more. They've, um, they've tasted more things. They've tried more things. Um, and they've acquired that ability to go, I want, I want to try something different. I think one of the biggest, you touched on it, go seek discomfort to maybe approach someone who isn't like you. Right. Um, I remember we were at a, we were at a networking event and uh, in the middle of the event, I, I found what was quite clearly a table of people that were n- nothing like me mm. um, and in every way. And so it was, it was like my, both a little bit of the thrill seeking um, nature of it um, and social curiosity, I guess if we go mm-hmm. to back to some of those um, principles there, um, walking up to that, that table and being like, who, who are you guys? Tell yeah. me about yourselves. And, and then when they, when they explain it, Oh yeah, go, wait a minute. Tell me, tell me more about that mm-hmm. and letting them explain it and go, well, why, why would you even do that? You know? And all of a sudden you just start to get this like, 
rich storytelling and these incredible experiences that, that I wouldn't have gotten had I walked over to the group of people that look exactly like me, that are probably in the tech industry, that are probably, you know, work in a creative space that t- say, have the same jargon, have the same vocabulary. Right. It's like, oh, you know, I wouldn't have stretched myself at all um, mm-hmm. to learn and grow. Um, and I'm not going to say I do that all the time, but mm. when the few times that I have done it, um, it's been transformational. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, ex- I one time sat down next to a guy um, down in a shopping area down in Kansas City. I was a homeless guy on the side of the road and there wasn't very many people around. So I, I given, given him something and then I sat down next to him because I was kind of waiting for, I think my wife was in one of the stores and I didn't have anything else to do. So I just sat down. I was like, what's going on? What, uh, what are you doing out here? <laughs> I think is literally what I said. What's your name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and he said, you know, I've been out here for years. And I said, well, why, how do people get, I've never been homeless. Why, how do you, how do you become this? How do you, how do you get here? Because some people want to be here. Some people obviously have mental illness Some people are on drugs and all these, all these stories that I just, I was like, well, I'm just going to ask him, mm. I'm just, you know, why not? Um, so I think that's a asking more questions. You hit it on the nail. You mm. hit the nail on the head. That's what I meant to say. Ah, uh, yes. That one. Quite right. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think we should wrap up. I'm curious um, as to how this is going to wrap up. I, well, I think we're just going to do it right now. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, if you get a chance, we'll put a link to this um, article. Really good. Um, again, this comes back to our postures, but it also takes having a discipline of asking questions, having a, a discipline of seeking discomfort, which are all in our, our, our principles um, that we've talked about in our framework. Um, but I think there's an underpinning. And I do remember when we first started asking ourselves, what do we want to name the framework? Mm-hmm. There was a bit of like, it's the curiosity framework. It's learning <laughs> framework. It's the adaptive framework. They were all kind of dancing around the subject. So I think I, that's the last time I remember us talking about the word curious. And I'm glad we got, we got back to it. Because, I mean, again, my name's George. I've heard it most of my life. Why, why wouldn't you like that? Um, I, I, would, I would love... I want to see if we can't find the, um, the, the original Curious George music and just like play out to that on this episode. I think I'd, it needs, it's a must. It's how, a, might we, how might we? How might we? I, it's got to be someplace. <laughs> it's probably copyright, so we'll be careful on that. Although it's been, it's really old, so I, maybe it's, it's lost its right. whatever the legal maybe term is. it's just public domain now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan, always a pleasure to talk to you. Love it. Can't you, wait George. until we can do this. Oh, did you just say you love me? Mm-hmm. I love you too, Dan. Mm. Special <laughs> moment that we just had there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for everybody to see. Um, I can't wait until we get to do this uh, actually across from each other in the studio again. It'll be fun. But until then, we'll, we'll continue to stay safe. Uh, if you're listening for the first time, there's a bunch of episodes you should go back and listen to. Thanks for being here. They're pretty evergreen. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, if you haven't already subscribe, it's really easy to subscribe. You may be listening to this on the crema.us slash podcast page, which is where you can find all the rest of our episodes. And that's fine. It's a great place to listen, but it's not easy to subscribe there. So what you should do is you could go to up to those little chiclets, those little icons there. It's not chiclets. That's a Mexican gum. Um, and click on it. It will take you to your podcasting platform of your choice. We're on all of them. Click the little red, blue, green, whatever color scheme you have it turned on button that says subscribe and then you're subscribed. That's all you have to do. That's easy. And just as a reminder, we happen to own this company called Crema. It is a digital product agency based in Kansas City, but we get to serve clients all over the world now. We get to use creativity, technology, and culture to help individuals and organizations thrive, which basically means we get to build really cool software that help um, mostly businesses do incredible work. Um, so if you haven't checked this out, look at crema.us. That's a little personal plug because you know what? We put the time in to make the podcast. We can tell you to come check us out. Yeah, we're here. We'll do what we want. <laughs> Our podcast. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but no, seriously, if there's any way that we can help you, even if it's something as uh, simple as helping to train your teams how to run better, uh, we've got coaches that help with that. If you're looking to design a prototype and test and validate your ideas, we've got designers that are incredible at that. And if you're looking to actually bring your real- product idea to reality, we have a full stack um, product team of developers. 
in the US that are building products and uh, launching them to the world. So check us out, crema.us. Um, as always, um, I really appreciate you listening. Share, oh, share this, share this episode. Copy the All link. your people, all your people. All of them. Every single one and ask those I, people to share with their people. Yeah, oh, I like this. If, okay, so open up your text, your, your email, which will include most of the people you know. Social media, if you wanna go there, I highly recommend it. Mm. Copy and paste the link to this, because if you're listening to this point, I can just keep telling you what to do. And that is, copy and paste that, require that that person say, hey, you need to listen to this, but I don't, I don't really care if you listen to this. I really want someone you know to listen to this. So please mm -hmm. share this. And if you could have them share it as well, because that's what's called virat viral. <laughs> <laughs> Going viral. Virality. Virality. We're, we're <laughs> so, so <laughs> hip. Anyways, we have fun doing this. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.